Hey everyone, welcome back. Three boxes, three gray boxes today. I yeah. speculate that there's a gemstone in here. Potentially be inorganic or organic. I'm wearing purple. Usually my outfits kind of match what we're gonna talk about today, so I suspect it's something that could be purple, has a variety of colors, you know, who knows? Oh, scapolite. So what I remember from scapolite, or about scapolite, was when I was in gemology school, getting stumped by scapolite and all these practice tests. So to become a gemologist, at the end of the course, you take your diamond class, and then after your diamond class, you basically take colored stones. And at the end of the colored stone class, you have to take something called the 20 stone. A lot of people actually refer to it as the tombstone test because you have to correctly identify 20 stones and you can't get one thing wrong. Nothing, no spelling errors. You can't get a, a treatment wrong. You can't miss a thing. It took me like two hours and 45 minutes. And I remember on some of the practice 20 stones, always getting tripped up by scapolite. M more than one occasion. Well, I know it can kind of come in different colors and we can talk about the chemistry of scapolite. Kind of curious as to what JTV has. Cause here's the wonderful thing about JTV. JTV is like Mary Poppins. In the movie, she just like reaches into her bag, pulls out like an umbrella, maybe a grown man, a couple puppies. I mean, just the whole host of things. You never know what Mary Poppins is gonna pull out. That's what JTV is like. So we have this huge, awesome inventory of jewelry, gemstones and specimens. So I really never know what's gonna happen. Ooh, look at that. I'm kind of nervous, you know, what's in the other two stones? Or in the other two boxes. Okay, here's your gray box back. So this is a pretty large stone. I was not expecting it to be this big. Scapolite, I think it's like a five and a half to a six on the Mohs scale. It's kind of this like pale peachy, kind of like a pale yellow almost. I don't, it's not colorless with all these lights, it's kind of hard to tell. But anyways, I'd say this is a mixed cut. It looks like there's a checkerboard cut on the pavilion. We've talked about this before. So top of the stone, that's your table, is like right here. And then you have your girdle. And then the bottom is the pavilion. You've got your culet down here. So the pavilion, it looks like it's cut as a checkerboard. And then up top, it looks like it's a simple, brilliant cut. So I was surprised about the checkerboard cut and the color. I mean, this is a pretty big stone. This is maybe not a ring, but definitely a pendant. What would you do with it? Does anyone own any scapolite? I don't own any scapolite in my collection, so why don't you comment let me know how many pieces of scapolite that you own. It's a big stone. I like big stones, and I cannot lie. Let's move on to the next box. I'm allowed to open another box? You said I wasn't allowed to, though. Yes, I was, yes. All right, ready? Oh, cool, rough. That's huge. Okay, I had no, I've never seen scapolite rough. First impression is that this rough is not the same color, but it's kind of that yellow family. This is a little bit more saturated. Right here, I can see these like striations. You see those in tourmaline too. I don't think that these are the same crystal system. You can see some interesting inclusions here. I really want to knock this thing open and see what's going on inside. Here, I'm not cracking this open. You know, scapolite, it's not one of those stones. I don't think it's super well known, it's not super popular, but that's fun. You know, that's what's great about unboxing is that we're able to kind of dive into stones that you may not be as familiar with. You may see it at a jewelry store. I think the reason it tripped me up so much was because it, it comes in so many different colors and it can kind of be similar to other stones. There's no like defining characteristic. You know, with an opal, play a color. With a sapphire and a ruby, the 176177RI. But um, scapolite, you know, off the top of my head, I can't remember if anything that's like its defining characteristic. To me, that's why it's kind of tough. Ooh, that's why you had me wear purple. Okay, this is really cool. Wow, is that scapolite too on the back? I wonder what that is. There's nothing on there. Okay, the host rock is actually what caught my eye because how white it is. So you've got this like purple hue with that white background. It's very striking. But then right here, there's this opaque, greenstone and that doesn't look like scapolite to me so i'm kind of um curious as to what the specimen is you know this is an example of how jtv is kind of like mary poppins you never know what they're going to pull out of their bag of gemstones or specimens in this case so it's kind of cool here you can see the crystal system or the crystal structure you know that face and that face looks very similar to what you see on this yellow you see that i think that's cool how you can kind of see you know the similarities between the two even they're completely different colors and then that, I don't know what is going on that backside. I wonder what that host rock is as well. I think that like stark white with that kind of pale purple is very pretty. You know, we've talked about 
the difference between rough and specimens before. So what's great about a rough stone is that you know you pull it out of the ground and you don't know exactly what you're gonna get. You can cut it. There's a lot of opportunity to make really good money in the business if you're in the rough because there's a lot of ways to optimize rough when you're cutting. Specimens though, they're just as important because on this, you know, I'm learning about the host rock, what scaplite is found with. I'm learning that maybe there's another material or gemstone right here that I'm not familiar with. I'm learning about the crystal system. I'm learning about inclusions. For all of you who are into specimens, why don't you try learning more about rough? And for those of you who like rough, try learning about specimens. Doesn't that look like a Jolly Rancher? It looks like a Jolly Rancher. I had a Jolly Rancher at my desk. It looks like a Jolly Rancher. There's probably purple Jolly Ranchers, and if not, the Jolly Rancher will watch this episode and they'll make a purple jolly ranch. They'll endorse you. And they'll call it scapolite. Okay. Right? I have no clue what this is right there. I'm stumped. Oh my gosh, you're asked the best question. Scapolite is interesting because if you think of a family tree, think of scapolite up top, and there's maybe like scapolite has three children, kind of families. The difference in those families is very minute. You know, all those children, or examples of colors, they have the same basic chemical structure. The only difference between a, a yellow or a purple is, just, is the difference is a, a very small amount of, could be sodium, calcium, who knows. So that's called the solid solution series, and I've actually talked to Renat about this. So basically Basically, we're gonna talk about food because you all know how much I love food. Think about you're making cookies, okay? You making cookies right now? Everyone's making cookies. You're mixing up the batter. You wanna make two types of cookies for your friends. One type is gonna be chocolate chips and a little bit of walnut. The other type is gonna be walnuts and a little bit of chocolate chip. The cookie that has more chocolate chips, that's a chocolate chip cookie. The cookie that has more walnuts, that's a walnut cookie. And that's kind of how it is with scapolite. A chemical composition that may have more sodium is gonna be this family right here, and the only difference is that it has more sodium than the other one. It's whatever the dominant um, chemical is, that's kind of how you break up scapolite, and it's called the solid solution series. Another really cool thing about the scapolite chemical composition is that it's really flexible, so that's why we get so many different colors. It's basically just like puzzle pieces. You put one piece in, swap one thing out for another, and you've got a totally different color. Fun thing about scapolite is that occasionally it can exhibit chatoyancy, and as you know, chatoyancy is also called cat's eye. But Hey, if you want to learn more about chatoyancy and asterism, you could mine through all of our old videos, and I will have to say there are a few gems in there. Or you could just watch the link that's popped up on screen about now. The name scapolite actually comes from the Greek word for rod or shaft, which I think is interesting because, you know, that kind of does look like a rod right there. And, um, you know, it's just two kind of oblong pieces. But hey, the only thing that's different between these two is not just its color, and there's probably some chemical differences, but also this is just size, guys. If you saw the whole crystal, probably would have looked like a rod, and these do too. It's one of those gemstones that's kind of like a, you can see the rainbow with it. Just like with Skittles, you can taste the rainbow. Scaphlet, you're gonna find in a variety of different colors. Obviously, we have yellow, purple here. Red is very rare. You can find blue. Yellowish green is extremely rare. Pink, orange, it even is colorless. So if you want to expand your collection with, um, you know, colors of different gems or maybe gems that have the whole rainbow, if you will. Um, Scapolite is definitely your next best bet. You get cool gemstones like this. But actually, it can splinter easily, and it only is about a five and a half to six on the Mohs scale. So if you are thinking about setting a piece of Scapolite and jewelry, make sure you go to someone that you trust. Go to someone that really knows what they're doing, that knows the business, and that knows um, how to set stones correctly and safely. But don't let that deter you from owning a Scapolite. When you have these purple and yellow varieties, these are easily mistakable for amethyst and citrine. I think the chemical composition is definitely different, but I also think the crystal structure is too. All right, everyone, take a closer look at the color on this. I really like that light purple, and take a look at the host rock. I think it's really interesting, the difference between the coloring of the host rock and scapolite itself. And take a closer look at that greenstone. I wonder what that is. This one's a little bit lighter yellow. This is a little bit more saturated, but it's still the same material, which I think is really interesting. You can see kind of the array of colors that Scapolite offers. And hey, maybe one day you'll find a stone that you fall in love with in this color.
the solid solution series that gets a little dense. I hope this episode wasn't too rough for you and that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment below and let me know what you enjoyed about today's episode. And definitely don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video with all your friends and maybe they'll be gem nerds just like you and I.